and welcome to the Angelati studio. We're now joined by Lawrence Schmidt, who's the VP of Smart Grid Solutions at Alstom. And uh, firstly, welcome to the studio. Uh, thank you for making the time. Uh, we were talking a little bit off air, and um, I was kind of mentioning to you, so everybody's talking about ITOT convergence, and um, I'm allowed to say this, so I will. I, I kind of feel like, you know, is this technology vendor selling technology, or is this really solving a business case? You know, where are the real pressures coming for this coming together of IT and OT? So that's, that's the, definitely a significant element for scaling up all the innovation which has been performed on the last three years in the area of what we call uh, smart grid deployments. And we are, really have had extensive experience in Europe and in the US in trying out new business model uh, with the utility, together with the utility, in getting better customer engagement uh, towards demand response, uh, new, new microgrid model. And I think our sector has now moved to the stage where we need to think rolling out uh, these new technology. And, and while before it was a lot about inventing new concepts, it's now getting matured and, and integrating it back as mainstream back uh, a business into the uh, back office of the utilities. So that's uh, precisely where uh, we see a stronger focus on OTIT integration. And what does that join from the you know, very agile, live OT world with sensors and data and God knows what, to the IT world, what does that join enable you know, what can you do by having that link that you can't do without it? So it, it's all about um, trying to better federate uh, distributed energy resources uh, closer to, uh, to consumers and getting data uh, which are not necessarily coming out of the grid itself, but on other devices uh, like thermostats or at uh, meteo station into homes and so on and bringing that back that information in real time, because real time is absolutely essential when it comes to grid resiliency and management into the back end of the utility. And so, so really what, what, what this new technology is about is, 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 is bridging that connectivity and then enabling a new, uh, new business model and going towards uh, data analytics for enabling uh, new services offered by utilities and, and that's really the, uh, the, the, uh, the beginning of the new Utility 2.0 um, uh, uh, business model. So let's dive into the business model a yes. little bit. Because um, we were talking off air and you said you know, you're involved with so many pilots around the globe yes. and everything. Let's bring some reality into this. Yes. Uh, I can't ask you to talk about every single business model out no. there. But can you just give us an idea of some of the more viable business models that you've seen that are now possible, that weren't possible five years ago, but are okay. now there? So what, what really is striking uh, nowadays is the, um, uh, the competitiveness of uh, distributed generation into various parts of the world. So we, we speak about uh, uh, solar PV as an example, which is now uh, reaching grid parity in several uh, uh, grid infrastructures. But we could say the same with um, uh, micro CHP with shell gas in the US, uh, as well as the um, uh, basically uh, fuel cell technology starting to ramp up out of the car industry. And what we see is that this technology now comes as a natural alternative to a, a back-end conventional generation, hence the need for utilities to better access and control these very distributed resources. So here, the day you do it, these resources will be integrated within uh, microgrids, so which can be within their own grids or into the private uh, side of the grid behind the meter. And that's really about uh, developing more services related to the management of distributed energy resources and microgrids. And I must say, we, we have just uh, announced uh, last week uh, quite a large uh, microgrid project with the city of Philadelphia in the US, which is for me exactly the materialization of these new business models uh, uh, in, in the city environment. So can I talk to you a little bit more about that, yeah. uh, that, that particular project? What are you aiming to do there? Because it's one of those things where, you know, microgrids up until now, the conversation has been more about rural, 
more isolated environments and things like that. What, what are you going to be doing in Philadelphia? So here we really see emergence of two kinds of microgrids. Some are the remote ends electrification of, of new territories and, and this is for sure accelerating in emerging uh, countries. I was in, uh, in Asia last week for also launching a project with Singapore under that uh, business model for the islands, for instance, in Philippines and so on. And the other model which we see is in the more uh, developed cities environment is rethinking the way of coordinating uh, the resources at the distribution grid node level. And that model was really introduced as part of our demonstrations done with Duke Energy and EDF in Europe, and where we see the need for ensuring new coordinate, uh, coordinated services. And if you look what we are doing in, uh, in Philadelphia is around the Navy Yard of Philadelphia, which is a very, um, a very identified area where mm -hmm. there will be new resources with fuel cells, uh, with PV and so on. And it's all about coordinated demand response and energy management uh, at the micro level of these resources. And that's, uh, that's, that, was, that investment was decided on a true uh, business case basis by, uh, uh, by the uh, development entity of that, uh, of that city area. Do you think we're going to see more of that, where you have uh, developers uh, maybe developing a greenfield site um, and say, hang on a minute, we're going to, we want to build these houses or these houses or this commercial area, but we want to take the energy conversation into account. We don't just want to put up houses. We want to build this whole thing as, as, a, as its own micro environment. Do you think that's yes? That, that, that's really the the way forward. If I take the example of France, uh, one of the lessons learned out of the demonstration is some cities starting to build smart grid ready infrastructure into their own city environment and uh, embracing all the innovation of smart grids into the early design of that city to take into account savings, which we can do across electricity, uh, geothermal and new distributed resources located within this building environment. So yes, that's, that's a way of industrializing uh, that innovation. And I think uh, the utility needs to be into that equation and they need to equip themselves with platforms facilitating OTIT integration to be able to offer these new uh, flexibility services. So let me uh, ask you another uh, question, and, uh, and this may be me oversimplifying it, but I can see a company like Alstrom or, you know, there are big engineering companies like Arab who are getting into this as well, actually playing a m much more critical role for a microgrid than the utility does. I mean, you know, what's the, what's the balance of power? What, 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 how does the utility play? Is it, is it about they need to change their business models or is there a danger that you know, uh, uh, companies like Armstrong or, or uh, 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 et cetera, start taking more of the lead in the development of these microgrids because of de demand. So, so, so for sure the, uh, the business model is, is yet to be entirely formed here. And, uh, but what we have decided uh, as, as far as Alstom is concerned is really to continue in the same journey of uh, partnering with utilities and capitalizing on their know-how, which is managing energy efficiency, uh, managing quality of supply and uh, coming as a support to them to do what I would call new services for microgrid integration. So I see ourselves uh, becoming a microgrid integrator in the future. So you're a service provider. Whoever wants to do it, if it's a utility, I'm, if it's I'm a, helping the, yeah. I would say, the microgrids to, to form itself. And then I'm also helping the utility to supply microgrid management services as part of the platform, which uh, we are jointly uh, developing. I, I'm not too convinced about a model where uh, the two worlds are going, to, are going to totally diverge because I think uh, the know-how of managing energy, uh, managing uh, wholesale trading and all these uh, elements, which is really the core of energy utilities, it's, it's, it's a complex domain and, and I don't think it should, um, it, it will be, uh, I would say, totally reinvented by, by, by the IT world as such because it's, it's really a different kind of uh, uh, domain and, and, uh, mm. and risk uh, profile. And, and what uh, do you see in terms of, uh, again, um, 
uh, and I don't want to dwell too much on microgrids, but uh, you know, you were mentioning off air some of the innovation projects that right. you were saying, and uh, uh, you know, you uh, in France, some of them have been highlighted as some of the most innovative use cases. Yes. Are there some more that you can bring to life for us in terms of that we may not uh, because we talked about microgrids. Yeah, so, so microgrid is, is one element. Mm -hmm. Another element which I think we progressed uh, pretty well in the past few months is what are the new IT tools required for enabling a distribution company to become a DSO. I think that's, okay. that's, that's one of the fundamental elements which is raised everywhere is what's going to be the role of the distribution company in the future in facilitating that market, making sure that uh, consumer can exchange energy peer-to-peer and I think they'll, they'll have to go into a new mechanism, new platform, and that's precisely what we uh, currently uh, demonstrate and try out with ERDF in France, as an example. And we think that's, uh, that, that's a very interesting model for uh, moving forward uh, DSOs in the future in Europe. So I just picked on some phraseology you used. Uh, 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 consumers to exchange energy peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah. How, how, how does that work? I mean, what, So here it's about uh, enabling uh, people to, to share energy in their own neighborhoods. And okay. that, was, uh, that was resonating into the opening of that uh, ceremony here about all uh, socialization of energy and so on. And I think the grid is, is, is to a certain extent able to do it. But what is important is we must keep some uh, uh, critical referees uh, to uh, put boundary of what is possible and I think the distribution companies in that uh, equations are going to be very important to make sure that we don't go beyond the wires and the physical capability of, of the distribution grid system. I think it's also very important that these uh, distribution company kind of work together with the transmission company so that the micromanagement at the distribution grid node level is also well coordinated with the uh, wholesale trading mechanism which are managed at the transmission level. And I think what we have implemented in some of our projects yeah. really uh, points on new mechanisms to manage this coordination between TSO DSOs in because this topic. Because those, all those little tiny things at the, at, the, at, the, at the distribution node, for example, yes. they all aggregate into significant effects on the trans transmission true, node, true, don't they? True, and, and, true. and that visibility, I mean, how do you achieve that? You know? so, so fundamentally the challenge is you have to uh, coordinate these resources from two different angles. One, one angle is the balancing of the entire system, and I think that's uh, more a continuation of uh, the activities of a TSO, of a balancing mechanism, auxiliary service mechanism. And the other element is making sure that the physical distribution grid does not get hurt by the active participation mm. of these distributed energy resources, and if needed, that they can, the distribution company can also call for specific services from these resources, whether PV, distributed storage, and, and so on. And I think that's where this platform must be able, on one hand, for the distribution company to interact mm -hmm. with the DER, mm. and on the other hand, is to let the TSO inform of that potential interaction so that it does not disturb uh, the market so, on so, the wholesale so there's side. So there's a predictive element to it that True. says, listen, it's going to be a sunny day. We are going to be pumping a lot of stuff or windy or, or whatever it is. And things if, like if I'm very pragmatic as an example of the nice grid project, that's uh, the, the typical use case would be uh, uh, um, a cool period in France requiring the system globally to uh, move the uh, load down during a certain peak period, during winter, for instance and then uh, going into uh, the south of France, that mm. during this period we would like a lot of, because this would be sunny, yeah. in that period we would have a lot of PV in feed into the distribution, and so where the distribution company would naturally want to actually increase the load into that distribution level, and then that would become a conflicting signal with the, uh, with the uh, wholesale system. And I think in that, uh, in that scenario, the distribution company must have a way of, of, of taking uh, some controls over this distributed uh, energy resource. And that's where that whole peer-to-peer -peer join and, uh, and everything comes yes, in. Yes. So, so as, we, as we're coming to the end of our time here, there's just one more thing. So uh, I wanted to run past you. It's a, a, it's a hypothesis that I've been kind of working on because my background is the IT world, right? Okay. And I came into the energy world maybe three years ago. I'm still learning a lot. I think I've picked it up fairly quickly. Um, 
But one of the similarities that strikes me is that in the IT world, about 10 years ago, people were putting security at the edge of the network, like, you know, antivirus and all that sort of stuff. But then suddenly the conversation stopped and said, we need security as part of the network. Do you think that we need energy storage as part of the network, as in the, the, the distribution and transmission systems need to be able to build buffers and energy storage into the network so that all this other stuff can work? So, so definitely energy storage will be needed in the future into the energy system overall. It's, it will be an expensive resource, so we'll need to make sure that we add it on the top of what can be seen as a demand response flexibility resource. And if demand response does not offer sufficient flexibility, then the question will be where to exactly locate it. And here it will depend whether the, you issue, the issue which you want to try to solve is related to transmission reserve management into your energy, uh, energy system, in which case it will really come embedded into your uh, uh, transmission system or whether it is related to uh, more issues uh, related to uh, congestion into the distribution mm -hmm. in which case I think the distributed uh, storage model can also find its value so in a nutshell I would say there will not be any single architecture for all these grids but will really depends on the topology of the grid where are the renewable located and where is how, how flexible is the demand into that specific part of the grid. And what you're uh, saying there a little bit, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm cross-checking with you, is that it, it, it becomes a third-line piece, the energy storage, right. rather than a first-line piece. I agree. You know, you, 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 if, you, if you mix it all together, that, that's when you... And, and then it, it becomes like this fallback. Yes, that's correct. I agree. Yeah. That's a kind uh, of honor. Uh, and to give you the, the, the last word a, a little bit you know what are to you you know one of the more exciting developments that you're saying you know you know when, when you look ahead and you go you know what that's the project I really want to work on or I think that's just gonna be amazing uh, which one would you pick out so the the one which I would really pick out is the microgrid uh, microgrid management services uh, concept I think there is plenty of different concepts behind smart grids. One which really turned out to be a nascent business model is this uh, microgrid concept. And is the fact that it will not be an isolated market microgrid, but in a microgrid connected with the main grid. So that means that it will have to be managed, in my opinion, by the utilities. And the utility will have to, uh, to go with, with new tools, probably in the cloud, probably more IoT and uh, to be able to, uh, to, to, to better master that microgrid. And, and, and for me, the current projects which we are doing in Philadelphia, or we, are, we have job open a, another one in Singapore, or in France, are, are, are very interesting uh, models for these new microgrid developments. And then to provide that as, as a service. Uh, Laura, it's been a pleasure talking to you genuinely. And uh, we've come to the end of our time here. Thank you as well for watching. And uh, as ever, all the other interviews, uh, I think, can you believe it, Lauren? We've done about 300 of these now. So, uh, so there's lots for you to choose from.